You're now tuned into me, 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 million dollars worth of game. Listen, man, we got my man Al up here, man. I just smoked him on pool, man, back in the day. <laughs> a lot of you young cats don't know I was playing, you know, um, when uh, Pennsylvania used to play Jersey. This is before I tore my ACL. I was an uh, All-American. I was a top player in Pennsylvania. Me and him used to go at it, man. It was, it was just different. You know, the, the game was different. Uh, the, the energy was different. Uh, the toughness was different. This back, this back when, you know, I was supposed to be number one in the – you know, coming out the you know high school before a lot of people, but around the time Kobe was doing this thing, rest in peace to Kobe. Uh, just Philly, you know, it was it was just wild, you know. But, uh, he lying, man. Think, what I say? What year was this again? He lying like a motherfucker. Oh man. yeah, my fault. Only only thing he ever was was he was the captain of the wrestling team in jail. Yeah, yeah. All right, <laughs> they whatever. called him. They called him the Macho Man Candy Savage. Yeah, listen, man. man. Listen, <laughs> he's in there. Look. <laughs> Ooh, brother. Ooh, yeah, brother. <laughs> Tell the truth, nigga. He was Macho Man Candy Savage in jail. Listen, man, man we got my man Al Harrington here, man. Big Al, listen, man, uh, you know, the game is different now. The ball game is different. You know, a lot of these kids, you know, we living in a time now where you got social media, so everybody want to be the star. How was it for you coming up where it was just raw? You had to go to the gym. You had to just go in there like – play with the old heads around the neighborhood, play with the, the dudes that was never going to the league around the neighborhood. How was it for y'all then? How was that? And how was it for you just getting into the game, just starting to play? How was it? I mean, I mean, so shit, we want to start with my story. Like, when I was a youngster, I was horrible at who. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I actually was, like, fat and uncoordinated until I got into the until I became a freshman in high school. I was, like, 5'10", fat, and that, that summer I grew six inches. So I ended up being 6'4", and I moved to Roselle, New Jersey. So when I got there, everybody see the six four freshman, they think I got some type of hoop background, but I ain't had none. You know what I'm saying? Turn him up just a little bit. So you made it to the league, not even at, you know, just young, just I, off the off the height. Bro, out of high school, like I ain't make it to the league off of height. You know what I'm saying? I got on the I got put on the freshman basketball team because of height. I even had to really try out. You know right. what I'm saying? But I started hooping, started to love the game. Um, you know, for me, like you know, coming in as like an unranked, unknown freshman and shit like that, you know, I, I ain't really have hoop dreams, you know what I'm saying? Like, all I did was like move around the country playing in some tournaments and seeing like players that was supposed to be like the top ranked in the cur in the country and just saying to myself like, damn, I could I could do some of that shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit that they doing is not like something that's like, you know, out of my capabilities, you right. know what I'm saying? So what I did was, man, for real, for real, I just, I just lived in the gym, you know what I'm saying? And to your point, of like, you know, now this era with kids is like you said with social media and they all have trainers and they got all this different shit. You know, when we was coming up, you know, in the 80s and 90s or whatever, you know, you just had to go to the park and just go hope you got some run. And you and you could be lucky if you seen a you know an old nigga in the in the park that you know would give you some game. Right. Like, yeah, young fella, you need to work on your left hand, don't keep going right all the right. time. You know right. what I'm saying? You right. hear like just little simple things like that. Right. That like if somebody older that played at a, some certain level didn't tell you that, you wouldn't know that. Right. Just think going one way the whole time is going to get it done. But pretty much, man, I got I got hooked up with this dude named Sandy Pionin. Um, he coached the AAU team called the, the Roadrunners. Mm -hmm. And he coached a bunch of players that had went pro before me, right? And mm -hmm. like some old dudes that y'all, you know, a lot of us wouldn't know the names of right. sometimes. It was like Anthony Avent. Um, uh, another guy, I, mean, I just can't, I'm drawing a blank on his name right now. But he had a couple guys or whatever. But pretty much he took me on this wing, bro. The nigga taught me how to, like, dribble the ball and chew gum. He told me how to dribble the ball, chew gum, and then shoot. Like, he had to break the game down to me, like, right. in its simplest form. Like, you would think I might have been slow. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But at the, end, at the end of the day, you know, what I what I learned in the long run is was he was setting a foundation. Right. You know when was saying? it? When was it that you came into your game? What year? I would say it was going into my junior year. Because it's safe to say, as a freshman, you wasn't that confident. Yeah, I wasn't that confident. I was trash. Yeah. I, was, I was on a freshman team. I was six for I was the play, biggest player on the team, and I played the least. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like hell, I, got yeah. in, I got in mostly in garbage minutes. Ooh. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And like yeah. I said, the, the reason why the AAU do, Sandy, I'm telling you about, you know, even found out about me, an uh, unranked yeah. freshman, nobody what knows. What year was this? This was 94. Damn, 94. They just think about this. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by New Amsterdam Vodka. Now, um, you're having a good time. You know, you want to party. You, a bunch of friends. Yes. Watch some games. Enjoy life. Enjoy it. You know, the weather's about to break. Maybe you get a 70-degree day, throw a barbecue. Nice barbecue. It's nothing more perfect than to have, you know, some New Amsterdam Vodka. New Amsterdam. Sitting on ice. 
Nice. It's distilled five times. It's filtered three times for a clean crease finish. If you speak Spanish, that's uno, dos, tres. And, um, you know, it's everywhere like broken glass. So when you're out and about at your local liquor store, make sure you pick you up some. You know, don't just yes. walk past the motherfucking New Amsterdam vodka like you don't see it because it's right there. It's right there waiting for you. It's right there waiting for you to pick it up and don't fumble it. Don't you know, don't drop it. Get it to that counter. Boop. That's the end Get zone. it home. Make some cocktails. Have a good time. New Amsterdam Vodka is the official vodka of Barstool Sports and the presenting it's sponsor. sponsor of a million dollars worth of game. Mm. Tell them again. The presenting sponsor of who? Million dollars worth of game. And the number one of vodka where? Pennsylvania. Mm. Say that again. Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. Philly's there. Mm. Why? Mm. You do. You be the judge. But if you want a nice, you want to feel nice, you want to be nice. Shut up. This is my nice bitch. Place. You ain't never drink. Oh, if you want to feel good, you want to feel special. Oh, my fault. You want to, you want to, you want to, because New Amsterdam Vodka too is, is, is like some, is, tell you, I, I, I had a few shots, I fucked the level off of two. I don't know if it was the vodka, but I'm telling you, I lasted a little longer. I don't want to say it's going to make you last longer in the bed, but that's what the fuck it did for me. When you're out and about, get you some New Amsterdam Vodka, and it's just like that. Yes. This episode of Me and I Was Worth a Game is brought to you by Barstool Sportsbook. Now, if you follow me on any of my social platforms, you know that I am an a admirate user of Barstool Sportsbook. You see, sometimes you guys be beg me for my parlays, for my picks for the day. You know, I'm going a little slower right now because I'm not really a heavy, heavy baseball gambler. But as soon as football and basketball season starts up, you guys know Barstool Sportsbooks has the best parlays. You could even, even uh, Big Cat gives you some tips. You know, me, I'm probably 70% on the on year, so I ain't bragging. I'm just saying I'm pretty good. I'm not telling you to bet with me, but I'm not telling you not to. <laughs> All I'm telling you is I win a lot. Barstool Sportsbook is the best way, the best sports book on the market. Why would you go anywhere else when you could go to Barstool Sportsbook? Right. In 94, Al Harrington was on the freshman team. And he was a BB, a big bum. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest nigga on the team. Nasty, it could Getting catch. Getting in when it's 28 seconds and they down by 17. Mm -hmm. He like, big bum, come on, big bum. <laughs> Yo, you know they call me on my nickname what? team? Big Daddy. See, I told you. I was close. That's because the coach ain't want to call him a bum. He ain't want to fuck with his future. He like, uh, Big Bum, I mean Big Daddy. Big, big daddy. daddy, get it, Big Daddy. <laughs> big fucking bum. When yeah. he, yeah. he going to get your fucking game together, Big Daddy? Yeah. <laughs> it was on you. But listen, okay, so you come into your junior year. Now you're confident. Yeah, man, I, I got that confidence. Like I said, I, you know, I, I played in a tournament with God Bless the Dead, Kobe. And Shane Battier was there, too. You know what I'm saying? Did Kobe cook you? I didn't play against Kobe in this tournament. Oh, thank God. Oh, you know who bust my ass on high school? Who? Tim Thomas. Tim Damn, Thomas. Tim ah, Thomas. that's my guy, too. Damn. Villanova, oh, baby. Villanova. He cooked you? Bro, I was a sophomore, bro. I played, I played him in two games that year. In both games, he had 40, bro. Oh, and damn. I had, and I had, like, two. Damn, Damn but both so games, dog. That what year was you with? This was that. This was ninety five. Oh, so you was a sophomore. I was a sophomore. Yeah, well, mm. that still was big bum era. Yeah, I was still big bum. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. playing. I was playing with Shaheen Holloway. You know the oh, yeah, no St. You know, Pat's, right? yeah. I mean, St. Peter's. So you know he was my point guard. So you know he the top point guard in the country. Him and Mike Bibby. Mm -hmm. So you know playing with Sha and you know he was you know he cut you the fuck out there, bro. Sha was a senior that was like a father. Yes, because there's nothing worse than a big man yeah. that misses a bunch of fucking open layups. But shit, I wouldn't even miss an open layup. I wouldn't oh. catch. I can't catch them shits. He <laughs> throwing no look bullet passes. I'm like, son. shit hitting you in the head and yeah. shit. <laughs> I'm like, shot. You could have just handed it to me. Why you gotta throw? Why you gotta throw it like that? When you look that way, I did too. Damn. Yeah, you was. That's crazy. That's crazy. crazy. <laughs> yeah, I was weak, sir. I was horrible, bro. Yeah. But so for me, for real, it was over a two year span, and I went from literally like. Top, well, I went top nothing. I was probably 150th in the country to being the number one player in the country in over Damn. two years. Damn. Mm. You know what I'm saying? What, mm. what, what work came with that? Because a lot of times, you know, uh, everybody with that instant gratification, just before all social, just before any super influences, 
What did you do to go from one fifty, which one fifty five? Right, one fifty something. One fifty something to one to one. What did you do exactly? Work, 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 work. Hard work, dedication, work in the gym every day. Like my high school coach used to pick me up at five thirty in the morning. School started at eight. He picked me up at five thirty. We get to the gym around six, six fifteen. I go change. I used to work out before school started every day. And this was in St. Pat's. We want no showers or nothing. So I work yo, out. Fucking must. Quick. Anyway, he was big and musty. Oh shit. Oh man. <laughs> God damn, <laughs> man. You coach, I'm telling you. Put my shit on. You know what I'm saying? Fuck it. Like, you know, at the end of the day, I had a hoop dream. I had a I had a goal I was trying to attain. You understand what uh -huh. I'm saying? So I'm doing that with him in the summer. I worked out with my AU coach at Sandy, dude. I'm telling you about. Every single day, except for Sunday. Sunday was the only days because I had to go to church. Mm. And my mother wasn't playing that. I had yes. to go to church no matter what. Not until my going into my senior year, she started letting me miss games, miss, excuse me, miss church to go to games mm. because yes. now she realized like I was actually nice. She was, she was Before like, that, wait. she's like, I needed the Lord. She, yeah, because you, you, yeah. you was a bum. <laughs> she was, like, was going to help you get she right, She was man. coming to the game, nigga, at 29 seconds and three fouls. She like, you need Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get your ass Give it up on me, dog. <laughs> she but like not every day. She, she like this really your dream. Take this boy. Yeah, my to mother used to beat me up until my mother beat me in basketball one on one every time. What? Dog, oh, until I was a sophomore. Damn. Yeah, you was big bum. I mean, this is a truly inspirational story. You need a fucking movie done on yeah. this. Yeah. In two years, you went from BB to goddamn PP prime player. Yeah. You hear me? Man, everybody ass up. Absolutely, number one player. Okay, now you, you get drafted. Yep. So let me tell you my draft story. So obviously coming out of high school, before before my year pretty much, every high school player got picked like top 10, top 15, right? Mm -hmm. So that year was coming out was me and Rashard Lewis and some other kid, I can't remember his name, but he was a kid that he wasn't even ranked. And like, this is where like they started saying like the players have an option to go straight to the league is ruining futures, which was some bullshit. But – we work out, me and him work out. I work out for the Orlando Magic. This is when they had Penny, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. I go to the workout, Penny's there. So they let me play full court. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't gonna front. I got the best of Penny that day. Mm -hmm. Right? You work Penny harder way out. Leave, I go to my other teams. Orlando calls me back. They say, come back again. I go down there again. Penny not there that day, but I work out with the team. I have my way again. Knocking down shots, post moves, the whole shit. When I leave, they say, don't work out for no more teams. We're going to draft you. So they had three picks in the first in the first round. Yes, they did. They're like 98, mm -hmm. right? They picked like uh, mm. they picked three bums or whatever. And they told Rashard Lewis the same thing. I know who Houston. they picked, too. That's crazy. It was some little-ass guards, wasn't it? It was Bryce Drew. It was, like, it was like something like Bryce Drew. It was, uh, damn, Michael Doliak. Yeah. But, uh, and, and. What's something that was the lefty from uh, that played at UNLV, Clark? No, they couldn't have been bums if they went to the NBA, though. I ain't say they was bums. Oh. I'm, oh, you said they was bums. I ain't say they was bums. Ain't no bums going to the NBA because no you didn't bum. go to ain't the no, NBA. Ain't no bums in the You NBA. never went to the NBA. Just, so you was a bum. No, I'm just saying. Because you saying somebody no, no, bummed no, 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 that went. No, you ain't no, ghost. No, you I'm definitely not saying they a bum. in basketball. I'm just saying they was a bum in the league. You can't be a bum in the league. You can't be a bum in the league. You can? You can. Uh, you get all that money being a bum? fuck you talking about? I don't There's know. a bunch of niggas that stole. There's a lot of dudes that steal money, bro. Every so, no, around. you got to be there for a reason. You talking about Andrew Bynum? He wasn't a bum. He Come on, man. Give him a pass. He Tell was a romp a bum, bum, <laughs> bum. <laughs> Who made him bum. a bum and he went to the league? Did yeah, anyone a chip? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Romp a bum, bum. Because, you know, Kobe won that chip. Paul Gasol won that chip. No, he did contribute. I can name motherfuckers hey, that was team, more. Of a, I, I can name motherfuckers. Motherfuckers that was more bums than Andrew Bynum. There's no such dumb thing as a bum in the NBA. Yes, it is. Once you go to no the league, no professional sports. Be a there's no such thing as a bum. Yes, you. you the could people be a that bum. didn't make it, you probably could say that. And some of them not bums because they still play overseas or whatever. No, but it, there are some people that got that, in on, on lies. What's so lies? How you get on lies? You got to ask stats. Yeah, but you know, just sometimes like the stats just don't be right. Like it's just like you got to you you was in a system that made you kind of nice, but then when you leave that system, I had to play like real ball. Let's just say. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Well, like team ball, like winning basketball. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Like, is this one thing just to like roll that shit out and just be like, do whatever you want, whatever. But like, when it's like, let's play within a system. We need you to play like this. We need you to do this. We need you to read and react. That's where a lot of players like struggle and they become bumps. Right. Mm. And, and you got motherfuckers that's athletic, that can score, that can get points, that, 
but they still be fucking bums. You play on a bum fucking team, somebody got to take the fucking shots, don't they? They going, there's an NBA team. They going to score fucking 100 points, 89 points. Somebody, Somebody going to have 24. Score. That don't fucking mean he ain't no fucking bum. That mean he playing on a bum ass team and he the best of the bums and he take all the fucking shots. I know motherfuckers right now that was averaging 25. Them niggas never won. That don't mean you a bum. If you don't ever win in life, what the fuck is that? There's a lot of dudes that ain't win. It's not a winner. It's not a fucking winner. So in the league, you, you was a fucking bum. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the difference between if you win in a regular season, you never won a championship. That's different. I'm talking about these motherfuckers. Oh, you average 25, but for six, for six years straight, but your team was fucking 12 and fucking. Come on, man. You a fucking bum, man. <laughs> Because if you was that good, you at least going to get them niggas 24 wins. <laughs> it's like, come on, we be teams out here with a 16 games, 14 games, 12 games. Come on, you, that's, if everybody's on the team's a fucking bum. Yeah. All right. I've been on a team like that before, so you kind of talking to me, bro. No, I ain't talking to you. You, you, you felt bum. that? How did you feel like you that? Wasn't. How did yeah, you feel? So what we, team I was, was you on, bro? What team was you on? When I played with the Hawks. We won 13 games. Like yeah. He averaged 22. <laughs> right. Yeah, you might he averaged 22, <laughs> man. Yeah, you might have been a <laughs> You snapped them out of it, though, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't waking back up. <laughs> you ain't never snapped them out of it. Y'all won 13 games. So, like, 30 y'all, games. Y'all won 13 See, 30 games. 13 games is the difference. Yo, yo, ho, ho. What's going 30. on in that locker room? What the, like, what is anybody no, talking we were, about? Listen, dog. We was the youngest team in the league. We had, like, all rookies. And then y'all was in Atlanta. And then we was in Atlanta. It was turned up in Atlanta then. It was so turned up in Atlanta. See, Magic the, City. The youngest team in the league had nothing to do with that shit. That that mean y'all got all the loose balls. This is what this shit would be. Y'all got all the loose balls. Y'all got all the steals. Y'all should have grabbed all the fucking rebounds because y'all had the freshest league. Y'all got a brand no, new fucking league. Let me tell you what happened, though. It wasn't that. What it was was like, I swear, like if, the, if, they play, if we played that season and we only played three quarters, like just played to the end of the third quarter, we won 70 games. Yeah, because your fucking legs was in Magic City. Nah, fourth, fourth quarter come around. <laughs> no, your legs wasn't Magic City. Magic your fourth City quarter legs in. was in Magic Not for the young boys. Not for the young boys. Only the older niggas was in Magic. <laughs> oh, yeah. Niggas oh, yeah. going to Magic for lunch. Uh -oh. <laughs> for lunch. Yeah, you ate there before? Yeah. He said for lunch. He said for lunch. That's why I that season was wild. <laughs> Yeah, look, he told with all the old niggas, but he was with you. Ain't there? <laughs> yeah. I thought you said that you was there when you was young. <laughs> you you hear? How you gonna put on old niggas that tell on itself? All the old niggas went there. Did you eat there? Yeah. Fucking food's great. Food is amazing. Food's amazing. amazing. Five star Michelin <laughs> chef out there. <laughs> <laughs> they going they going to lunch and then go back to practice. Straight up. That was crazy. Yeah, Matt, you listen, Atlanta, but yeah, 13 wins, bro. The locker room was like, it was a very young locker room. We had a Which y'all was listening to? What music y'all was blasting at that time? 04 was like when 50 came out. Y'all was in your bag. You know what I'm saying? So it was like 50 and then you T.I. obviously. Yeah. This was like when Atlanta was like going and 50 saved New York at that point. Yeah. So like Atlanta was taking over and you know 50 came with his shit. So we listened to that shit, but we had a coach, Mike Woodson. Mm -hmm. So y'all know Mike Woodson, bro. Y'all got to meet this motherfucker do a show. This, yo, he is one of the best people, but he's funny than a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. So just imagine having a coach that's like, he really an angry nigga, but he funny at the same time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we yeah. just losing, bro. The nigga just be, he be tripping. And you know we you know we go at it as a team like sometimes like the young boys like Josh Smith was mm -hmm. just a fucking head case. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying. He wanted young to do Josh Smith, man, he wanted oh, to do whatever the fuck shit. he wanted to do when he wanted to do it. And him and Woody would you know bump heads all the time. But like one of my funny Woody stories is we was in um we was in Chicago and same thing third quarter we kicking ass fourth quarter we lose and I'm tired of this shit, bro. So I'm like fuck man, come out the game. So when I'm walking out, I kick the chair. But I, I thought I was just gonna like kick kick it, but when I kicked it, the whole chip bench fell back because all the chairs was like in the lock yeah. together, right? So it all fell, boom, whatever. So the, the coaches in the back, they push it back up, and then Woody come all oh, like busting through the pit players, like, who did it? Who did it? And I was like, I did it. He was like, nigga, you got me fucked up, nigga. You're gonna be disrespecting my huddle. I was like, man, fuck you and your huddle. Damn. He's like, take your bitch ass to the locker room. I was Damn. like, man, fuck this team, right? Go in the back, right? <laughs> so he's such an angry nigga, right? I know he be wanting to fight because he's oh, I used to have to shit. stop him for like wanting to fight Josh Smith. So I'm yeah. like, so I go and take my shower real quick. So I put my shit on, but I kept You're my like, socks yeah, and my shit on, but I got my underwear on under my towel and shit. 
I'm waiting on him to come in there on bullshit, right? <laughs> so he come in and he just like, man, shit, man, like. He's like, man, we just too young, man. We just we can't figure this shit out. Bring it in. So we bring it in. So they bring it in. All right, whatever. Hawks. So then one of the coaches come and be like, yo, what do you want to talk to you? So I'm like, this nigga here, man. So I get up with my towel, wrap my towel and shit. And I walk in there. He's sitting there at the chair, shit. He's head down. I walk in. I'm like, what up, coach? And they get up. He say, man, you my nigga, man. We just coach. too young, man. We ain't going to never figure this shit out. <laughs> He said, we ain't gonna never figure this shit so, out. So let me just say this. <laughs> That's what he said. You my nigga. Good thing gave me a pound and everything. Bro. Damn, man, the coach. Dog. So let me That's just say nigga. this. He's gonna be mad. He said he with you. Nah, he never could. <laughs> <laughs> let me just say this in coach defense. You ever thought that coach might have been so angry because you niggas won 13 games? His fucking job was on the line. Yeah, his job was on the line. Nah, he was, a fr- he was, it was his first year. So he came. He came from the Pistons where they just won the championship. Right, so and see you hot. niggas in practice playing around. He said, "Oh shit, we had to, bro. We were you, so you nasty. niggas in there lean with it, right? Hey, lean, lean with, with it. it. Wow. He just came from the Pistons. <laughs> they was the fucking bad boys right. and somehow <laughs> the workhouse. The, yeah, right, they call that was Rashid and them, right? That was Rashid and them. Yeah, they was the second Wild version of the bad boys. He get the y'all, y'all niggas down there. All y'all want to do is go to Magic City. Y'all in there playing around. He the fuck y'all is Lennox this shade day tripping. <laughs> Nah, he stuck with us though. Shit, he had no fucking choice. He, he signed no choice. up for that job. No, he they was paying up for, him. He, no, he signed up for that bullshit. He didn't yeah. sign up. And it's funny, right? Because when you have coaches like, bro, like, we not dumb. Like, we know when the season start if we about to be nice enough. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. You ain't got it. Like, come on. Like, but you walk into the first day of the season and the coach is like, yeah, so a championship. Yeah. We're going to go for this championship. Yeah. Like, like, we got to play championship basketball. Uh, he got to talk that dumb thing, shit, like, man. man. We got a championship <laughs> to team. play in this uh, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't even got a team. We ain't even got you a motherfucker. We ain't even got you no superstars in this motherfuckers. Coach, just develop us, nigga. They don't need no shooting the ball at the end of the game. Who the fuck? Everybody take a different shot. <laughs> Let me ask you, ever got any altercations yeah, in the locker room? Yeah, we had some altercations. Yeah. Can't talk about them, but I'll yeah, give you one, yeah. a good one. I ain't going to get the names, but I was with the Pacers, and uh, we was doing a drill, and um, one of the young players on the team, which ended up being one of the stars of the team or whatever, um, Mr. Layup. So one of the veteran niggas said something to him like, "Yo, something, man, make the fucking layup." So I'm telling niggas like, "Suck my dick." Damn. The OG, he was a guard too, like six three, stocky oh, nigga. No, like you, Uh-oh. like you. Oh yeah, we punch hard. I give you his ass while I sock while we was Darryl other. Armstrong. Ooh. I'll tell you who threw the punch. I ain't gonna Ooh, tell you who he hit. Lord, damn. That nigga just they doing the drill, running. He just go walking, <laughs> walking. The nigga says like. That's it. Nobody broke it up. Nobody Somebody went to sleep. Was it a pillow? Pillow involved? He knocked him out, but he punched him in his mouth. And nigga backed up. He was done after that. He was like, "You ever invite me to your dick? I ain't know no better. I ain't from where we from, I guess." Yeah. But yeah, that was like one of the that was one of the best ones. Damn. Well, we had a bunch of altercations. When you play with angry niggas like Ron Artest and Jermaine O'Neal, <laughs> right. like Jermaine O'Neal, like you know he's real soft spoken and shit. Yeah. But he one of the most angry motherfuckers on the planet. No, I asked that because you know. When when the when the Jordan Poole and the, the Draymond Green situation went down, they try to make it seem like, oh, this never happens in the NBA. Nah, that, it it's, happens. It's only like nah. It's just now it's because of the cameras. Right. Like, that's just but yeah, like we fight all the time. And, right. You know what I'm saying? Like and, and it's brothers things, you know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like you fight, you know, you right. yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna kill you, mo. Right. But you come in the next just day. Just you know, just think. The boy Tristan Layton Gill played for the uh, school Cabrini. It was a boy named Tristan Layton, Christian Layton, the brother. He sucker punched Gill. Get Gil went to sleep in the locker room. <laughs> white boy, yeah. Tall white boy. He was about six, no, six, did, six, twelve. Believe that shit. Yeah, so what you sucked, do? But he didn't do shit. shit. He called me up to bring the guns. <laughs> bring the he wanted to we be on some neighborhood shit. You in college, cuz we can't do that shit. <laughs> And then, said, then you got to take that White boy knocks you out. It's take that out. Nobody know about it. This is before the cameras. Right. I said, don't tell nobody that, cuz. Right, right. Don't tell nobody that was Christian Layton and Christian Layton brother. You know what I mean? Don't tell no, nobody. No, but you know what's funny? He said, I said, man, you ever got all the kids? Nah, I ain't, but I ain't going to talk about it. But you just told us how the coach is about to tune you the fuck up he like a 96 Honda. And, and he was scared. He said, I sat there and put my socks on. Damn, my drawers. First of all, you knew he was scared because he could have got dressed. He had all that time he to get dressed. He had all that time to get dressed. He wanted to go there with his drawers. He wanted to go there with his drawers. He knew coach was going to 
Sake with his troops. No, but he would have let him know, I don't want no trouble. I ain't got my sneaks on. I ain't ready. Like, he threw the white flag without throwing the white flag. Like, I just got my drawers on my towel. We right. ain't got to get in there. Did he want to be brothers? He brothers. was on some shit like that. We supposed to be brothers. You a brother, I'm a brother. We go. He was going to break. He had the whole joint down. He, you know what I mean? <laughs> he had the whole speech ready. He coming, he coming to the locker room. He playing fight the power. This is around T.I. and them. <laughs> Lean with a rock with a time. He playing fight the power. What the fuck is you doing? He trying to establish that we brothers. You ain't got to establish that shit. He ain't going to do nothing to you. You got your drawers on in your socks. <laughs> he not going to hit you. He's like, I don't want to this nigga to sucker punch me. <laughs> he, he wanted to initiate the peace from the rip. That's right. cool. He said he wanted to put his head down. He was bitching. Coach had he bitching. <laughs> <laughs> coach is going to tune you to fuck up like a 92 Honda. You're yeah. crazy. I wouldn't. I ain't, ain't no coach beat me up. Bro. No. Damn. No oh, coach. No. Only coach. Only coach I was going to beat up in my, in my time was Don Nelson. Damn, Damn man, come on, now, then you out of pocket. Come on, man, he's old here, man. Don, 111 years old. Yeah, Don, 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 Don told you some gangster shit. Don told you some gangster shit. That's what it was. What Don tell you? I ain't going to say, boy. Damn. No, don't, you, Don you, you already me. put Don out there. You was going to try to tune nah, Don up. Nah, he really, nah, he ain't really said nothing too crazy. Don sat him on the bench. Nah, did he say me? He sat me on the bench. Nah, he ain't sat me on the bench. He was just a, actually, I want to smoke with him now. I actually want to, like, kind of make amends with him. You know okay. what I'm saying? We'll make a man. Look at the hey, camera. Hey, Don, he wants to smoke. He wants smoke. What, what, what flavor you going to smoke with? This camera right here. Viola man. flavor. What Viola's flavor would you smoke with Don? That would be. That would be. Don, that would be I would be. like to smoke some Viola OG with you. Okay, because it's OG. Just I like so we that. Can sit okay. back, relax, you know what I'm saying, and just make amends. You want to tell him you could tell him you're sorry right now, man? I'm not sorry. Okay, no, okay. Yeah, you just want to smoke, get a nigga high, and set a nigga. Yeah, yeah I got to apologize. He'd be like this year, Don. Yeah, man, we had some times together, man. It, it, it kicked it yet? <laughs> nah, but he's trying to start getting drowsy. Remember you ain't put me to fuck in the game that time? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to beat his ass. How that. you want to make amends but not saying sorry, though? Because it's enough for me to say sorry about. You wanted to beat his ass, man. Yeah, you don't say sorry for wanting to beat somebody ass. So, dog, you could get, okay, listen. If I get mad at a nigga that's 69, I could want to beat your ass. I was mad at the time, but then yeah. after I cooled down, I realized, damn, OG is 69. Yeah, but just because he's sixty nine don't mean nigga, that nigga can say whatever his... he want to say. See, that's Damn. the problem. See, the sixty nine year olds think that they get a pass because they old as hell. He did get a pass. He did. Fuck. He it. got a pass. You ain't fucking him up. Ain't nothing happen. Yeah, and he talk crazy. He sit your young ass down. And if you sixty nine, you got them old hands. <laughs> old hands is different. They be all like this big and put them the Jones that this, if he would have slapped, you know that'd have been on seeing this sports center everywhere. You would have came across a ticker in the morning. You know what I mean? When people look, people looking at the points, you would have came. It's just been a, a, big, a, big, a big old white hand. He got them, 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 get, them uh, what's the name hands? Them farm hands. Them Jones probably big too. Why? He nah, slapped you. He slapped the shit out. He slapped the black off. His nigga woke up clay top. Nigga head would have hit the jump. <laughs> would have hit the jump back up. You would have been done, man. Your name would have been crazy, fucked man. up after that. Why y'all niggas think the coach is gonna beat my ass? You man? never know, cause yeah. cause you know why we be saying. Let me tell you, them old hands different. Them though, old hands is different. You had them young. Tender joints. Yo, you know, the grandma, the, the grandpa. You know the grandpa hands. Yeah. He be like, "Boy, stop blaming me, boy." You know, that's when he hits you with that. You see, you, you just look at the head when he hits you. Stop blaming me, boy. And you know, you know, for his hand, OG slapped him, knocked stop him out, got him pregnant. In the jail. Fuck out of here, nobody slapped me. You yeah, that yeah, ass. Yeah, he had to have abortion in jail. The fuck out of here. <laughs> Slap your dumb ass. Get out of here, man. Them big hands, though. But no, that just be real. But this episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Body Armor. Let me tell you something. Barstool hydrates with body armor, rides with team body armor. Body armor is the official hydration partner of Barstool Sports. When, when you up at the office, you see it everywhere. You see it in refrigerators. You see it it's stocked everywhere. So soon as the refrigerator is empty, which is very quick. I'm talking about people drink this like 95 South, you feel what I'm saying? It's flying out the refrigerator, but it's stocked everywhere. So as soon as the refrigerator empty, we can fill the refrigerator up. And it's the best hydration, real hydration, with electrolytes, potassium, vitamins, no artificial stuff, no fake ingredients, etc. Sports drink and sports water is all over the office. Anytime you visit Barstool, you understand that Barstool and Body Armor partnership is about to be humongous. I'm talking about it for the next few years. It's taking over. Body Armor, the official hydration partner of Barstool Sports. Top athletes drink it too, like Christian McCaffrey, Donovan Mitchell, Rana Ascuna, Alex Morgan. So tap in. 
But the fit the fever flavor out right now, strawberry lemonade. I'm just saying. You need to taste that. Fruit punch is pretty good as well. So stay, so stay tuned. Get you some body armor. It's now on Amazon. Get you some. Right. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Molson Coors. We celebrate life's biggest moments with champagne. But everyday achievements deserve to be celebrated too. Whether it's closing out your to-do list, getting somewhere on time, or just making it through another hard day. So the next time you accomplish something within your everyday life, make sure you celebrate it with Miller High Life. The champagne of beers because that's what living a high life is all about. Welcome to the high life. Living a high life means you appreciate quality and timeless classics. You believe the best part of life are not rare but yet hard to achieve. You celebrate achievements with your everyday champagne of beers. course. Like people have done for generations. So welcome to the high life. Go to Miller High Life slash millions to find Miller High Life near you. Celebrate responsibly. 2023 Mil- Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 2023 Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Right. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Monaco. Monaco cocktails offer full flavors. Spirit-based can cocktails that pack a punch with two shots in every can. Serve chilled and cracked one open. With tons of bold, delicious flavors from core cocktails and hard lemonade to classic or spicy margaritas, there's Monaco for everyone. Monaco spirit-based can cocktails are ready to drink and easy to take on the go. Just serve chilled. Pour it over ice and enjoy Monaco your way. Monaco makes real cocktails for real good times. Double down and get the party started with Monaco cocktails. You need to drink that packs a punch for the fight night? Pick Monaco, hard lemonade, the official vodka can cocktail of UFC. Feel the fun and find Monaco can cocktails at a local retailer near you. Must be 21 to drink. And please drink responsibly. But what is it like? Yeah. Like you know the, the game. <laughs> no, that's, some, that's some good shit, man. I ain't gonna lie, man. <laughs> All the fuck we've been doing this. <laughs> yeah, some shit. These niggas are man. Yeah, in the skirt, man. That's some good shit, man. I ain't gonna lie, man. Cherry bombers. Cherry yeah. bombers. Now today, today game. Today, what is it about the day game that you like, and what is it about today game that you don't like? <clears throat> I mean, I don't, I don't like that. I just feel like they don't play no defense. I just don't feel like there's no pride in defense. So it's just weird because I'm like, like, where is that? Like, I want to stop a motherfucker. Like, you not about to get 30. Like, what happened to that? What I like, what I love about the game is the skill level. Like, these motherfuckers are dumb nice, bro. The, the animals. Bro, they making moves and step back, side step back, front step backs, between the leg, euro, euro to the other, like, the, the, the shit that they trying out there is is just crazy. And the fact that, like, they've mastered it because it's part of their regular routines. You know what I'm saying? And then even, like, when you see the way they dunk and shit, jump in the game, throwing the shit between their legs, around their back. So it just seemed like the game is at, like, an all-time high from a skill perspective. And I love that. I love to see that shit. All right, now. <clears throat> right now, you're a coach. Them young boys would try you, too. If you was a coach, a young boy would try you because you will be talking to them. One of these young boys would try you. But if you're a coach right now, you got to put the team together. You can't put none of the you can't put none of the top boys. You can't get coach. You, I mean, you no, can't you go get, get LeBron. Up. No, no, no. You can't get no. He can't get none of them. Every team can't got two. Of them. You can't get nobody. Why not? How you can't get them type of who is who is going to be your who who is going to be your starters? You can't get none of the big time boys, the name brand boys. Who who you picking? Because that's too easy, man. Yeah, you Why is it easy? You, you got at least get, get two players. Yeah, I unless you get one. Unless you get one. You can't get one. Hey, team got two players at least. All right, I'll let you get two. Damn. Fuck. Damn. You want right. him to, you that's want too him easy, man. A, you want him to have a 13 win team. He was on fucking bunch of bums. Yeah, that 13 win team. Yeah, y'all was, yeah, y'all was yeah, bums. Was nasty, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Who you taking? But Magic City fucks y'all game up. Yeah. Blame it on Magic City. Magic City. And they bank accounts, too. did a lot of therapy He keep telling me we had lunch. I had the lunch. Them lunch breaks at Magic City fucks your whole season up. Nah, it was therapy in there. Fucks your whole season up. One time we lost so many games that by the time we won, Sports Center showed all the shit that happened since we last won a game, like Super Bowl, NBA All Star, MLB Championship, all kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like uh-huh. that's how that's how nasty we was. Yeah, you know why? Because y'all had the worst record in the league, 
And guess who really won the NBA championship? Them bitches magic said. They won it like a motherfucker. They won it. Y'all was in there throwing it, throwing, mm-hmm. y'all was throwing, y'all was making well, it rain in there. They was too. young niggas in Magic City in Atlanta. None well, of them niggas was showing, was You was showing Kemp in Magic City the rain, man. No, no, no. That's who you Antoine were. Walker was. Antoine Walker was. I was just his Oh, Walker had the big, did he have a big contract yeah, at that yeah, time? Yeah, oh, he had the big money. Well, listen, man, at the end of the day, bro, I've, I sleep well at night because I know that we set up a lot of women and very life, good, yeah, man. They got a lot of mansions, a lot of they, Ferraris they and shit. Homes, mm-hmm. All kind of shit. Yeah, yeah we gave back. Hey, that was a good people. investment, though. Yeah, that was man. a good ass See, investment. I always man. worried about the kids, but yeah. what about the parents? Yeah, they needed some. Yeah, <laughs> the parents need some support. Too. I would have did the same thing. Exactly. Y'all so lucky. Listen. Y'all lucky. I was in there. Y'all wouldn't have won one game if I was down there because we just stayed in there. They got a game tonight. Fuck the game. We going in. Come on, y'all. Don't worry about it. If I was the captain, shit. Magic City. The shit I heard about Magic City when I was in jail. Let me would have been the captain of the Hawks. Y'all would have. We listen. They'd have probably closed the franchise. Fuck man. Fuck it, man. We going chill. We already got the money. We come on. Let's go here. We'd have been laying in that joint. We'd have been chilling in that joint. Uh, my jerseys would have been hung up, signed, all that shit. Yeah, they, they retired jerseys in there too. Yeah, yeah did they? They could have retired my Magic City Jersey retired shit. some niggas too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you hear me? They retired a lot, a lot of, of niggas. A lot of all the famous came out of that joint. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, listen, my two, my two off top. I'm going Luca. Damn, I knew it. And I'm going Giannis. Come on, man. Come, come on. You can't. Do okay, you Luke, see, okay. That's what I was you about, Luca and Giannis. Who you putting around them? Can I get Fred Van Vliet as a guard? Is he? Is, is yeah. He one of them? Yeah. Okay. I'll take Fred. Since I got to take, like, all right. uh, as a four, I take my man Bobby Portis. Mm. Play, mm. play at uh play for the Bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, what I got? I need. I got a. I got a big guard. I got Giannis. I got Van Vliet, little guard. I need one more shooter. Can I get Anthony Davis? Yeah, that's what you want to do. Yeah, y'all ain't put Anthony Davis in the top tier players. What? What? Eighty? You talking about Lakers? Yeah. No, Anthony Davis. Is- He's a piece. He's a beast. So y'all let me get him too? Yeah. That's I mean, my team. I mean, you can pick who you oh, want. Oh, no. See, you giving him a who the, pass. Who the top five players you played with? That I played with? Yes. Yeah, top five. Reggie Miller, Jermaine O'Neal. They say my game used to be like Reggie. Davis, Joe Johnson, and Ron Artest. Joe Johnson sure? played for Atlantic, right? Mm-hmm. You I sure? Remember. That I played with? Yes. Yeah. That's my top five. That I played with. You ain't forget nobody. Don't do this. Don't do that. Because you know you'll get a call. So, damn. Oh, don't do that. Come on. Okay. Don't do that shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Say, say, right, right. say it, Gil. Can I take somebody off my team? No, no. Say it, Gil. No, no, no. no, no, we talking no, about, no. I'm, we talking about, I'm letting clean this shit up. Who? I'm talking about the best players you ever played with. All right, let's crack it. We start again? Yes. Start over. Don't get no calls, right, man. You have to take, bro. All right. No, we put no, it going to take. Aaron Davis. Yeah. All right, B. Davis. Reggie Miller. Uh-huh. Reggie. Steven Jackson. Steve. Okay. Uh, you better ask this, Stack. Because I was going to call you, Stack. He, he forgot you. <laughs> I was going to call Stack. That's right, Stack. J.O. All right, that's my team. Oh, believe that. That's my five. Now, um, Viola. Yes, sir. This is, after, this is after the NBA career. How does Viola come about? So, Viola came about because I was in Colorado and um, cannabis was like, Coming legal there for medicinal purposes or whatever, medical. So I've always been a newspaper reader since I was a rookie because that was one of my duties. I had to bring newspapers, orange juice, and Krispy Kreme donuts. And I realized, like, that's actually a pretty cool way to know what the fuck is going on. So I always kind of stuck with that routine. So I was always reading the newspaper when I get to the arena and shit about cannabis and how it cures, this, that, and the third. So my grandmother comes to see me play. And when she got there, uh, you know, I had took a bag downstairs, brought it back up. And it was a pill bag. She opened the pill bag. She took like 30 pills. So I'm like, Grandma, why are you taking so much medic- medicine? She was like, I got everything. <laughs> she was like, I got high blood pressure. Yeah, I got diabetes. Sure, yeah, I got yeah. glaucoma. So when she said glaucoma, I was like, Grandma, I was just reading the newspaper how cannabis cures glaucoma patients. So she was like, so she started listening to shit. She was like, well, what is cannabis? And I was like, it's marijuana, weed. She was like, reefer? And she reefer. Like, dying yep. laugh. She like, reefer? She like, I can't believe you trying reefer. to get me to smoke reefer. reefer. Da, 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 da. So she said no. Next day, I come home from shoot around. She's sitting in the house and she complaining about her eyes. She like, my eyes hurt so bad today I can barely see. So I said, Grandma, why don't you just try cannabis? It'll be our secret. I won't tell nobody. She's like, all right, I'll try it. My boy back brings back Vietnam Kush. We put in a, vo- a volcano bag thing of all things. Take it in the garage. She start hitting it. So finally, she had like four times. I see her eyes getting a little. What's glassy. a volcano bag? Because I don't know what that you is. You know the volcano thing where you put the weed in and it vaporizes in the bag. Oh, okay. Okay. Up. Yeah, I know that, John. 
So that's what I gave my grandmother to smoke for the very first time in her life. You know what? Gil had smoked some uh, some soft out of that. <laughs> some some re rock some re that was re rock crack. Like he had smoked some out of the volcano bag one time. He had debt. He had no. It was debt. Yeah, yeah, he had debt. Yeah, yeah, he had debt and some PCP. It's a safe the volcano place, bag. He went crazy. He stripped out. I didn't know what the fuck it was. I, That's I'm why back. you said volcano bag. I had to bring him back because I took him. He, he had his clothes off. I put his clothes back on. And come on, cuz we can fuck is you doing? Because they called me. They called me down the way. I, I gave him some milk and laid him in a bathtub. That, that was it. I just remember that volcano bag. No, he put some heart. I don't know what he's talking. About. He put some heart in there. Some white heart up in that joint. He smoked white heart before. Go ahead. I don't know what but the go fuck ahead. Talk That's about fucked that. up, bro. He used to love that tan, but go ahead. <laughs> so, yeah, so she smokes it, take it downstairs. She go, I, I'm thinking she's going to lay down. I go to lay down, go take my nap. Wake up an hour and a half later. I think about the first time I smoked weed, how paranoid I was. I was like, I'm going to make sure she's okay. Yeah. So I go downstairs, knock on the door. Yeah. I don't hear nothing. Knock again. I just open the door. I, when I open the door, she's sitting like to the right, and her, back, she, her back's to the door, and she's looking down. So I say, Grandma, how you feeling? And she literally she turns around and she crying tears. She say, I'm healed. She's like, you know, I haven't been able to read the words of my Bible in over three years. And I'm like, what? So I come in and she's Damn. like, yeah, I can see again. She was like, well, so I call my mother and she's like telling my mother, like, everything is so bright. God gave me my sight back. So after that happened, I started to like really start reading up and doing due diligence. Like you were saying earlier, like sitting up on a computer for two yeah. hours a night, like learning about the plant. And, uh, you know, pretty much at the end of that season, uh, me and J.R. Smith went to go. J.R. Spliff? Yeah, J.R. Spliff. <laughs> J.R. Spliff. Me and J.R. Spliff go to, you know, get some product for the end of the season. And then that's the first time I got introduced to, like, seeing what the business of cannabis looked like. So I called my cousin. He came in town because he's the only person I knew that could grow that I could trust. And, you know, pretty much the rest is history. You know what I'm saying? He came in. We found a building. We started cultivating. At first, we were, like, growing specifically for, like, you know, people that were sick or whatever. So they would give us their paperwork, and we would grow specific specific strains, you know what I'm saying, to deal with their ailments. You understand what I'm saying? And, like, that's how we started. And then we ended up becoming Viola, like, 18 months later because when we got our license, whenever you sold flour in a medical market, like, you sell it, you know, you put it in a bag, and it just goes to the dispensary. Nobody ever knows who, you know, who grew it. So for me, especially being in the NBA all that time, I understood, like, the power of branding. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, how can people know, like, this came from us? So with my grandmother smoking, she stopped smoking because all the functions for the church was at her house. So she'd be like, you know, she felt like her house was starting to smell like weed. So that's what made me learn about concentrates, where I could, like, grow the plant. I can extract it down to, like, oils to either, you know, make it as, like, hash. You know, you could put it into, like, vapes or you can even like infuse it into foods mm -hmm. whatever so once i learned that method i started sending her that stuff and then also you know in colorado if you provided any products like that you had to deliver it to the store and, and use the packaging so that's how viola came about you know what i'm saying so now we make in the, the name, trip, in the from, name. From grandma. and now we go to stores and start and then we started to build our brand. why, why purple was a part of the brand that's my grandma's favorite color Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's our favorite color, man. Like everything that we do for the brand, like has something to do with her. Like even though we just launched edibles, right? So we call it Grandma's Kitchen. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And all the flavors are flavors that was her favorite flavors. You know, she loved coffee. She loved to make a bomb ass uh, pitcher of Kool Aid. You know? Yeah, that Kool Aid. They don't even make that shit no more, Apple man. Pie, all that. I don't see Kool Aid. Do they got that shit in the store anymore? It's diabetes, man. No, and this, it was. Up. Come on, man. That's part of the that's fucking stupid part ass. Part of the journey, man. That's what you talking about? You grew up off of that shit. The fuck is you talking about? Yeah, mom used to make that inside. Enough Kool Aid in prison. Salisbury steak for you. <laughs> Go ahead. Hmm? No, I ain't drank no Kool Aid in prison. You did? No, I didn't. What'd you drink they didn't have no commissary. What would you drink? You drink water, a lot of hot tea, shit like that. So you drink hot tea for twenty years? In prison? Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. But yeah, you were saying about Kool Aid and, and, and the juice from the Oodles and Noodles. <laughs> no, no. You should drink hot dog <laughs> water. Did. Shut up. Come on. You, you know, drink you take hot the dog bowl, water, bitch, and drink. Uh, the you should drink hot dog water as tea walking around the house. You lose it. I've drink. never eaten glizzies. Yes, you Fuck did. You just love some hot dog water. He grew up on glizzies. He grew up on glizzies. Hot dog water. He used to drink the hot dog water like it was tea. She would say, no, he the boy never ate no glizzies. You won the hot dog water contest down the way. Shut up. You just drink hot dog water. You was a turkey. You a vegan glizzy. Get out of here. Yes, you is. You a vegan glizzy warrior. Shut up. No, I ain't gonna front. I ain't gonna front. Uh, uh, what is it? Phil Rose. They got some good vegan. I know. Drinks. I've seen you those yeah, the six spicy pack drinks. back in one sitting. I'm like, damn. <laughs> you know, you ain't seen then they glizzy, come out all puffy and shit. Yeah. No, no. These joints is nice. Yes. They, they they good. They good. They, these these vegan joints. They different. Yeah, they, but no. See, they eating grass gl glizzies, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so so now it come. When did the business start to be serious? When did you say this thing right here, this right here, is really something serious out here? I think for me it was it was probably like my third year in. You know what I'm saying? It was like when I I was like in a position where I had to make a real investment into it. And you know, obviously, you know, talk to put, the mic. So when you put up bread, you know, that's blood, sweat, and tears. What was the first? Was the first investment real big or was it? Serious? So my first investment was only like I think it was like 120,000. So we yeah, was able to get the building and we was able to build like these two little bullshit ass rooms with like 20 lights in it. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it wasn't a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, how, what, what do a big room have? You said 20 was in yours. What do a big room have? A big grow room? I mean, now, I mean, shit, where we are in the industry now, you got some rooms that have a thousand lights. Damn. You know what I'm saying? But usually, like, rooms that grow a thousand lights usually don't grow good weed. You know what yeah, I'm why? Like, it's just because it's, it's harder to, you know, control the environment. You understand what I'm saying? And, like, most plants, you know, they they require, like, you know, special attention and different things like that. Then when you grow in rooms that are, like, 20 lights to, like, 40, maybe even 60 lights, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we consider that, like, craft cannabis. You know what I'm saying? Because you just you, you kind of make the perfect environment, you know what I'm saying, for the plants to thrive in. You know what I'm saying? So that obviously we get that gas smell, we get the correct terpenes and different things like that. So, you know, it just it depends on, like, you know, your setup, but you know, for us, you know, any anything that we build out, we don't do more than sixty lights in a room. All right, now what is it about? It was it, you got to educate the people because you know a lot of our people, black and brown people, went to the penitentiary, right. weed and all that stuff, all type of stuff. What is it about these licenses that I heard? I, you know, I was hearing about the minority licenses or something that we supposed to be first up, or we supposed to be a certain amount of license that supposed to be allocated to our people, Correct. based off of the struggle and what we went through with incarceration and when they legalized marijuana. What is the information on that? So I mean, you got to look it up because every state's different, right? So what the programs are called, they're called social equity programs, okay, essentially, right? And you know, and exactly what it says is like it's about equity. It's about creating an equitable opportunity so that you know you can make generation, you have access to making general race, generational wealth, mm -hmm. you know, money, right? Um, while we, you know, we fight for that all day, right? And it's because, to your point, you know, eighty five percent of all drug arrests in the black community, you know, in our lifetime last 40 plus years that we've been on this earth has all been cannabis related, right? And when you think about that, you know, we don't own no farms, we don't own no trucking companies. You understand what I'm saying? We yeah. know where all the weed is coming from. It's coming from a place where there's one way in and one way out, Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? And somehow it still, you know, uh, distributes tons and tons and tons and tons of weed every fucking year. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So we know that somewhere along the line that the powers that be are involved. You understand what I'm saying? But right. when it gets to our community, you know, we're going to jail for having less than a gram of cannabis. You know what I'm saying? Three, you know, three times, three strikes you're out type shit. People going to jail for years because of having, not even having enough weed that you can even smoke a joint. No, hold, no, no. There's a lot of people that are not going to jail for years. Gil got caught with 100 pounds. He told, he didn't go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> he got caught with 100 pounds of Reggie. That's why, too. That's the only reason he was like, listen, on, this is Reggie. We won't let you go shit. out. Just give us some big guys. Give us the guys that got that exotic Who stuff. You with the on, bro? He told on his wife, and uh, it was his wife and some other girl. They was doing a little, making some moves. He was really hustling for them. He told on Tootie. Hey, listen, man. Mm -hmm. Don't you believe that shit, man. My wife right in there. She'll tell you, nigga, we want the court. How many lawyers we had? Six. You had, a public, you had a public pretender. Shit, I had Gaskiola. You had a mixtape. You know who I had, nigga. He went in there and gave a mixtape up. Shout out to Gaskiola, man. He told him that he gave a mixtape up. Shout out to Gaskiola, he, he went right into the interrogation office. I you, got a story man. to tell. That's the new thing, right? Everybody you know. Yeah, everybody telling. He been telling. Started, started 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 he been got down. Nigga, you, they, they told me, nigga, how loud you screamed when you heard my case got dismissed, nigga, up to jail. He told me how happy you was. Fuck you talking nah, You think it ain't come reason. home You got busy on the people But listen <laughs> And the boys ready to come home You told them 10 years ago They ready to come home I'm just saying I heard about that shit I ain't got nothing to do with that If you looking at this They family members I was I was in jail So if y'all gonna do Whatever y'all gonna do I ain't got shit to do with that Don't involve me with that He nah, told me you're not me this nigga with Yeah yeah places. yeah yeah You think I'm saying hey, But but I just wonder What the fuck is Al laughing at man He keeps all smoking that funny like, stuff Don't be believing this nigga Al this nigga's a fucking so, so, nut So so now Yeah thank you Yeah I ain't gonna lie It's good 
Well, the, the whole the thing is shit ain't believable. I told him some shit. Yeah, you did. It's believable. That shit ain't told. believable. So, so when this he got the thing. caught, he tried to tell on me. I got away. This That's the joint. problem. I always was the athlete in the family. No. He always got caught. He got caught. <laughs> then he screamed at Gil, come out, and all types of shit. They no, got us. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you what happened. Can I be honest? Can I be honest? When they did catch me, I did tell him, but he activated a snitch back. So they gave him the snitch back clause. Did I gave the game up to him. He said, snitch back. He got me back. And he was like, all right, we're going to let him go. I'm I'm telling you, I, I didn't know about a snitch back in there. He, he activated snitch back in America. He was the first dude to do the snitch back. Because the first boy tell, they was like, you got a snitch back. He went, snitch back. He got me back. And they was like, we're going to keep wild up. And I did the 20. And I ain't never put it out there, but he activated the snitch back clause. That's actually a law in America called the snitch back. If you snitch hey, back, yo, if somebody snitch on you, you snitch shit, back. That shit, that get shit out. right That's what there good as shit, man. What? Because we laughing like a motherfucker. <laughs> Happy weed. Now, now how did you go into, all right, because, you know, how do you go about now? You got it. You in the, you you going pushing your stuff and you giving the packaging. You know what I mean? Because marketing is anything. I be seeing some magical packages because I always tell Gil, I like yo Gil, I like yo get that bag right there. That's some good shit because the bag just look decent. You know, we and it turn out turn bag, out should be a little rough for him. So how do you go about the packaging and the marketing of of the cannabis? Because marketing is anything, and you seeing these dope bags everywhere. But how do you, you know? So for us, man, with marketing, we just we just we do shit that we fuck with. So you know, I keep some youngsters around me, like my nephew, his little men. They, they do the graphics. They, they, they do the not even the graphics. They just keep me honest, right? Okay. So like, you know, our office is more of like a creative space. You know what I'm saying? So we're constantly always talking about the business. You know, they're always coming into your point, bringing in new bags, new weed, mm-hmm. new this, new that. You know what I'm saying? So they're keeping us honest to know what's going on. Now the way that I'm thinking about cannabis, I'm thinking about it long term. Understand what I'm saying? I think that the bag culture, um, at some sometimes can seem a little gimmicky. Yeah, you know it is gimmicky, especially in Atlanta. Yeah, it's like it's oh, just, it's just a little, it's a little bags. gimmicky. So like, we want to stay away from that, and we embrace it too. Like, it's the culture too. Don't get it twisted. You know, you understand what I'm saying? So yeah. we got to embrace the culture. So we will do. It's a like a mixtape cover. It, it give you that mixtape. No, cover them niggas it. in Atlanta. This nigga pulled a weed. And it was a Chanel bag. Like the weed bag had. Like it was a Chanel bag. Like I knew that shit was Dookie. I'm like Chanel don't sell weed. <laughs> Like, but no, that means it's designer, right? No, that's I'm what like, it meant. Like, that like, means it's high. Like, that's your name. Like, that's like high, like, high like Chanel designer. sell clothes. Like, I'm not stupid. Like Chanel ain't got no weed on the market. Like I knew that shit was Dookie. Like it's like these niggas in Atlanta is crazy, and I'm gonna keep grinding you niggas up because you niggas is crazy, man. But you gotta understand, a lot the, of people the packaging dope. The shit these niggas come up with. Oh, the, I told him before, and this happened. A lot of dudes that pulled up or they had this stuff. A lot of these bulls don't be from Atlanta. They be from somewhere else. Oh, a lot yeah. of people in Atlanta is not from Atlanta. Yeah, they just be dude, claiming but, you can't but get I'm them. I'm just cr- saying, it's the down there. The, you're right. But it's down there in Atlanta. A lot of you're right. A lot of the niggas dudes was is dude, not from. Dude. I'm correcting you right now. Okay. A lot of the niggas was from New York. Keeping it all the <laughs> way real with you. Word the mother, son. Word the mother. Fact, <laughs> son. Because there's a New York nigga. Let me tell you something about New York. He niggas. everywhere, bro. There's a New York nigga in every city. In the world. In the world. And he got the same rap. But he from Brooklyn, though. Mostly Brooklyn. Nigga. Mostly Brooklyn, too. And all them niggas going to tell you the same thing. I run this shit, son. No, you don't. <laughs> you in China. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? This shit, you son. don't Word run my this mother. shit. Word of life. Word of mother, son. You need anything, son. This is my shit, son. You know what I mean? New York niggas told me that in Atlanta. Every last one of them, son. Gilly, you need anything, son. It's my shit, son. I'm like, you was born in Queens. The fuck are you talking about? Yeah. These country niggas gonna kill you now. You mean? Yeah, <laughs> niggas, yeah, they slow the fuck down, slow. man. Keep, keep playing thinking niggas slow. Keep thinking niggas slow. You, keep niggas keep, slow. you, you run this shit. Out, no, you don't, man. You grew up a thousand fucking miles away, man. Uh, but that's one thing about New York niggas. I'm telling you, they go anywhere and get their fucking hustle on. They, they the hustle. best hustlers in the world. I don't give a fuck what it is. New Yorkers think everywhere else is sweet. Oh, everywhere. That's why they. But that's why they get off. They're uh, trying. They come with that mindset. And shit, they just go and make it happen. But uh, they I'm definitely a, think everywhere is I'm going to keep it all the way real. Not they in Philly? Not they were. They, 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 you in the Philly? That's they, 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 they don't, they don't, they don't come, come to Philly. Philly. No, no. Don't do that. No, them New York niggas, no. no. Philly. That's a dangerous New Philly place. niggas shoot niggas. And I'm yo, talking why, yo, about. Yo, why one time I was in the club? I was in the club. I was in the club in Philly and these girls was in there and they all had like like stockings on because it was like winter, obviously, like during the season. But all of them had hair on their legs. Y'all like that? 
Oh, well, I oh, use one. What that got to do with hair on their legs? All them had hair on their legs. Oh, you like ran into some rough ass, ass West Philly <laughs> bitches, <laughs> man. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so they was from down north. They was from down north. Yeah, they was they was North Philly. You ran into some rough ass. They said they all had hair on their legs. Couple street bitches, man. That's all. Why you say hair on their legs? That's a wild shit. Wow, but man, because when you see, bro, because if you see a pack of bitches, they all got hairy legs. What the fuck is going on in here? What's going on? Yeah, that's wild. Fuck is you bitches? Teen Wolf. I thought that Harry and the Hendersons. Team Wolf was yeah. a big show. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Big show. Team Wolf Philly niggas like that. I ain't nah, fuck Philly. Like they don't like that. They just gonna put that on Philly. Keep y'all niggas warm or something. Yeah, keep keep y'all niggas warm. See, see, the truth is, hey, y'all cleared it up. You, hey, let's see, see, you see how niggas that niggas ain't shit. He, <laughs> he, he tried to. He really can't tell the whole story. Them bitches was in his hotel room. No, I, see, I, had four, I see four bitches in the club, though. No. You see the bitches the in the legs. hotel room under the lights when they came out them stockings. You said, those hairy leg bitches. What the fuck going on in Philly? But he still fucked. I guarantee you. He still got some. He, they still suck his dick from the back of there. Them Philly bitches fishing. They suck your piece from the back of him. As low, he loves these niggas. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Yeah, these niggas yeah. Let me put my business on the streets. Don't put my information out there, man. He loves his piece suck from the back. Don't yeah, say that. Man. Don't do that. I ain't saying that. I'm the, oh, I don't know what he's talking about. Don't put that out there. Look, don't that, put that's that shit how out you there, do. Man. He woke up with four hairy legged bitches. And shit. Oh shit! He was drunk as shit the night before. He woke the fuck up, seen them hairy ass legs. <laughs> they was always look, legs. T was that shit was always legs rubbing his legs. He, look, how he he look, look how he laughed nah, at this. Bro, stop. You all right, all right. I gotta relax. Come on, sir. That's what you know a nigga tell the truth, son. Relax. Come on, chill. What? What happened? Relax, B. What happened, B? Words, son. Word to life. Come on, son. Well, listen, man. Come on, my mother, B. As we, we enter the new game, you hear, what's the next level for Viola? Man, we, you know, we're now starting to stretch our arms across the country, going to the East Coast where I'm from. Y'all coming to Jersey and Pennsylvania? Coming to Jersey. We'll be in Jersey on, I think it's March 24th and 5th. Mm. Fifth and sixth, one or the other. Mm. Think about this, though. You was just a kid, Jersey, and now you coming back to bring cannabis to Jersey after going over to the league. You wasn't even sure about your game back then. Back then, I would have barbecued you. I would have put 40 on you back then. This is when you was a bum. You got your game fuck together. Fuck you mean, right? He wouldn't have put 40, I'd have put 40 on it. I had a game back there. Shit. Did he play? He, fuck no, I he didn't play. I just saw him in the backyard shooting on a six-foot rim. He looked cold. motherfucker ankle's I always been heavy. He didn't do Bro, nothing. Why is this nigga just sitting on a six-foot rim? Because dumb. he's a bum. But you you, was I nice over there? No, you wasn't. You was never you nice. If he was a rapper, he'd be. And then beat. you had my man over here looking crazy. This thing is too talented to be out there shooting on a six foot rim against you. Who, too rare? No, but listen, let me explay uh, this. I'm going to barbecue bake you too. Let me explain this. Let me explain this. Back there. He I'm too say good this. for that. Don't do that to him. I'm going to say this, though. I got, I got some victims. Now, you remember. KD hated on me. Came this KD way. said you was a fucking bum. Durant said, he said, I said, how's my game? He said, what did he say? I'm not quite sure, but he hated he it. He said you'd be a hell of a water boy. All right. Carmelo Anthony called you a bum. Damian Lillard called now, you listen, a fucking Dame, 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 a listen. bum, 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 bum. Dame, 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 Dame he, was, he, was, he was a little, now, I post Rasheed Matt. Rasheed Wallace I post called Matt, you a bum. I post Matt Barnes up. He blocked that shit. Stack, I, I sound him. He was scared to he was scared to said you was a fucking bum. It's a lot of fucking haters in the NBA. So we, gotta, the NBA we always got to get all the all the real niggas that did it. We got to get their opinion. Is he a rubber bum bum? No, he's seen some nice shit out there. You seen no, move it, it, I mean, the, the footage that I seen, you don't look nice. I mean, you could have been nice in high school. No, fuck no. He didn't. He didn't go to high school. <laughs> he went to jail. Oh right. You want to get no? He didn't jail play no ball in prison. No, he Nothing. all he did I won was a couple work. championships in jail. No, he did. What you talking about? All he did was had jobs in jail. That's all he did. What he was doing. The Why captain they bring of the, nobody here, wait. The captain of the wrestling team. He's a fucking hater. He, he was he hosted karaoke night. He was a lifeguard in the prison showers. He had he, he was a pimp in jail. He had bitches in jail. He lying. Ricky Minaj. He had he on He keep lying. Every show he be lying about this shit. He had Lil Him. He just a liar. Not Lil Kim. He had Lil Him. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so he he laughing like I'm joking. I'm He's dead. lying on me. <laughs> I'm dead fucking serious. Every show he gave, he gave, he <laughs> drop a lie. <laughs> he had Kevin the Style. <laughs> he drop a wild lie. He drop, <laughs> he drop a wild lie every time. He think I'm joking. See, see, y'all, y'all, y'all got the giggles, man. What the, what's in that, man? What the fuck is in that, man? Yeah, we eat some good Look, shit, he man. He rigged you yeah. a J. See, that's a J. 
Yeah. See, see, that's that's a real smoke jays. That's old nigga shit. That's old. That's old play. Yeah, you gotta get a record. You gotta get a record. Man. Roll it up. But I'm gonna smoke it because it gave me all smoke the jays, man. It's old. They tell them to read. It's old nigga shit, man. Smoke the shit, man. Yeah, smoke the jay, man. You old. That's reefer, man. No, this ain't no reefer, nigga. That's reefer. It's the same thing. You heard what grandma said. It's called reefer. That's what your grandma used to smoke. That's what Nanny definitely used to smoke reefer. I wonder the Nanny, uh, I gotta ask you. Nanny, nanny 89, reefer. man. Now, let me just tell you something. And everybody's parents who was grown in the 70s, if your parents was grown in the 70s, they snort yeah, yo. I'm just gonna say <laughs> yo, that. Whoa. I'm just, How you just gonna say he put well, yeah, For sure. Every put parents yeah. in the back, and then yeah, yo was every, every day tried it. It was a new drug. They tried to How you put that on somebody? I'm just, all right, let me ask you. I'm gonna put that on my grandma. Man. Listen, man, man, you put that, that shit on people. Call your mom's. <laughs> no, he just put no, that shit on people, man. No, because your grandma might have been too old, it might, like in the 70s. She might have already been in like her 40s. I'm saying if so you your mom it. was in the 70s and she was in her 20s, she snorted that. Yeah, yeah, all of them did. They took ecstasy, LSD. They had no fucking ecstasy back then, no, man. LSD. Oh, yeah, that was that other stuff. That was that stuff they be at, at Woodstock ecstasy, dancing man. and shit, that's stripping out. Yeah, yeah, that's a psychedelic that's stuff. A, a yes, lot yeah. of these niggas was yayo babies. Man. All right, so you're coming to Jersey. It's ready to go down, Viola. Tell them what's going down. Yeah, so we, like you said, we're coming to Jersey. We're about to, uh, so New Markets, Missouri. We just launched last week. Okay. You know what I'm Damn. saying? Did that with my homeboy, Abe, my co founder, Dan, and my man, Larry Hughes. Larry, okay, Larry. Shout out to Larry. My game was like his. Yeah, yeah, so we, was business, we business up. partners. <laughs> um, we got Jersey coming up, I think March 25th, mm -hmm. 26th. Um, then we got uh, Arizona mm. today. That's what I'm talking about, man. That's Congratulations. Just launched here. We're in the Congratulations, also, man. That's beautiful. A couple of different places. Uh, what dispensary are you at in Arizona? Uh, so we launched an exclusively in this joint called Soul Flower. Soul Flower, S-O-L. Yeah. Yeah. Flower, I'm Flower. familiar with that. So we're exclusively in there just for the first two weeks. And after mm -hmm. that, we started getting to all the other stores. You know what I'm saying? In this yeah. Uh, working on it, trying to get uh, New York. License. What spots y'all gonna be at in Jersey? What's the name of the spots? Uh, so we're gonna be in Rise Dispensary. Rise Dispensary, Rise. okay. Yeah, I heard that. Try to get into Cookie. And what's the name of the ones you in Missouri? Uh, those are Viola. Okay, Viola Street. Damn, y'all got to. You coming to Pennsylvania? Coming to Pennsylvania. So you come to Pennsylvania, man. We do that strain, you know. You know I don't know if y'all got enough weed for that shit, though. Definitely ain't got enough weed, but we gonna figure that out. I ain't, I ain't got enough weed. We do a strain. We, we sell out. We locking on. We, we let y'all know something coming. Something coming y'all way, bro. Yeah, I mean. You know what I'm saying? Dude, is Reggie still good on the market? Like no, Reggie? man. You keep telling me people smoke Reggie out here. Yeah. There's older people that like regularly fucking weed, man. Well, okay, yeah. The older people. Well, older people are allowed to smoke bad shit. weed because you've been smoking bad weed. A lot of these young boys yeah, smoking too, man. Let me just tell you something. It costs too much fucking money. Let me just tell you something. All you young niggas that smoke bad weed, you're a fucking loser. I'm telling you now. Everybody not built for that. No, you come up in a time where good weed, you win. It's. Right here, you smoking bad weed and fucking a good weed era. We ain't had no fucking choice but to fucking let the seeds run down the box and all that shit. You motherfuckers got a choice. <laughs> Reggie you a fucking still young out boy, young you boys smoke always bad smoke weed, you're a fucking loser. Get your fucking mind right. These young boys smoke bad weed out here, too. I'm telling I'm you, no man. I know two redheads are bad motherfuckers. It costs too, cost too much money. It costs too much money. Fucking young boys smoking some fucking dookie. I couldn't believe that shit. He gonna hit the dookie and do like this and shit. Yeah, <laughs> that's that dookie. That's that fucking dookie, that's man. Dookie Changed shit. his life. That's created the Shout dance. out to my youngity over there in the back. That's why man. I'm fucking with him. <laughs> but yeah, man, Viola, man, they doing their thing. And uh, we appreciate you for coming through, brother. Appreciate you, bro. Uh, thanks for having me. You know, obviously we met, you know what I'm saying, yeah. four years ago. I came the through there. It was a pandemic. Yeah, it was right. Pulled up to the yeah. office. Yeah. We documented. Big shout out to Mark Bias for putting Yeah, shout out to Mark. Shout, shout out to Mark, Mark Philly. That time. And obviously that's when y'all was like kind of just getting y'all shit going. Yeah. So I just wanted to tell y'all niggas, it's a real nigga. Super proud of everything y'all. Thank you, brother. Doing. Thank you. Happy all the fucking deals y'all cutting. Yes, you know thank saying? you, man. to see like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to say it. The hood way of black excellence. We got to mm -hmm. figure out how to say it because I like black excellence, but I just feel like it's a corporate way of saying it. Negro yeah, excellent day. Right. We just got to come up with our own way of saying that, but that's we Negro like, excellent day. <laughs> and oh. like, and y'all impressive so we could, too, bro. So the like, Spanish people can say it too. What we go? Over? I'm Negro excellent day. Yeah, Negro excellent day. That's right. the new. Mm -hmm. That's we running with that. Black yeah. and brown people, Negro excellent day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro. But listen, man, y'all, y'all inspiring a lot of people, man. A lot of people doing wanting to do podcasts because of what y'all got going on. You know what I'm saying? So just keep. I'm gonna say this, man. To everybody that want to do a podcast, do it. Is is 
you know, everybody, we don't have every audience. There's 8 billion people on the planet. There's people that's going to listen to Million Dollars River Game, and it's, a, it's billions of people that's not that might listen to your shit, whatever your shit might be, whatever you might connect to something that might be, you might be talking about cars, or you might be talking about uh, 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 young, uh, uh, the, the, what's the, high school sports, or whatever you might talk about. You might talk about beers. You might talk about, it's so much shit to talk about, but just find something different that you could talk about, and there's an audience out there with you. Just tap into it and just do it. Don't be sitting there waiting. You don't need all this. You could just have a phone. You have your phone, rip your audio, upload the audio, put the video on YouTube, and just put that shit out there. Get a logo, get a name, and put your shit out there. And the, the hustle, best. though, but y'all niggas, like, but, like, to me, from where I'm sitting, it don't look like y'all niggas sleep. No. Because y'all like, because well, you, it's more than y'all show to me. This is from what I'm, yeah. I, y'all content is crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, it yeah. seems like, because it's funny, like, I've always, over the last couple of years, I've been saying, I got to do more content. Mm -hmm. But, like, it takes energy to do that shit. Energy and effort. It's like, just our life, though. Or we just but, document our life. It takes time. But the fact that y'all keep that shit going and that shit always relevant. Y'all niggas always got me dying. Mm -hmm. Got my wife dying. Got my family dying. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, laughing at the shit y'all got going on. You know what I'm saying? I just take my hat off to that shit. Because I know as a nigga that be thinking about doing it and wanting to do it for myself, I know mm -hmm. how hard that shit is and how hard it is for me to even come up with ideas and be that creative. Yeah. It's impressive. See, but you know brother. what's so crazy? Man, I don't even really come up with ideas. Just be doing I just turn the camera on. He's a nut ass nigga. Let's be doing that's us, it. Man. That's, that's fire. It's nut Oh, how you just gonna say that's fire that I'm a nut ass nigga? Yeah, yeah, See, yeah, that's the weed, man. Is. That's the weed. You talking about Dan? That's, he's I mean, a nut ass nigga. Because, because the reality of it is, he's comfortable now. And when you're comfortable, you tell the truth. You know, I said he's another. Yeah, that's fire. He's agreeing. He knew you're a nut ass nigga. This ain't nothing to debate. Every nigga in this joint know you're a nut ass nigga. It's 22 niggas sitting back there. They, we all can agree Wallow's a nut ass nigga. See, you was a nut ass uh, nigga, Desi. Uh, <laughs> Desi, man. Desi was, smoking, nigga, Desi was smoking wet down in Atlanta. We already know. He was smoking wet. Uh, PCP. Uh -huh. He was smoking P. That's why he got into the comedy shit. He just started doing videos. Uh -huh. Ran around there. He was a wet head. He was uh -huh. a sherm head down PC. He was a sherm head in Atlanta. He's out there. Put it out there. Everybody know that. Desi was a sherm Yeah, he was smoking sherm, stripping out. That's he keep, like he and up. Lennox, he and Lennox just keep stripping out. All day and all day That's why he got kicked off the high school team. Yep. They caught that, they caught that PCP <laughs> in his bag Yeah, he had a whole jar of that shit. That nigga had 14 it. catches off that shit, though. Yeah, yeah, he was a bad motherfucker. He was a bad motherfucker off that what, though. I ain't gonna mm -hmm. lie, though. But, <laughs> uh, man, make sure y'all tap in with, uh, with Viola. And appreciate and what you're doing, And hopefully, you know, we might be having a strain coming soon. You know, appreciate you never know. Appreciate what you're doing, baby. You never know. And it's just like that. Right!